Hey, what is up guys, I'm KBHD here, and this is the Moto G. You've probably heard of it by now if you've watched my videos, but basically I don't tend to talk about the price of the devices that I'm reviewing in the video review itself. But first of all, prices tend to fluctuate, and something that's a bad deal one day could be a great deal in price the next. So this is actually not one of those devices. This Moto G costs, starts at $179 for this smartphone, off contract, which is a ridiculously good deal and always will be a ridiculously good deal. That's super low in terms of price for an off contract smartphone. So why is it that cheap? There, you feel like there has to be something missing, something wrong with it. There's gotta be a reason why the Moto G is so cheap. So that's exactly what I've looked into. And if you've watched my Moto X review earlier this year, you probably know plenty about that phone already. So the easiest way to tell you guys and show you why this phone is so cheap is to compare all the things that are different between the Moto X and the Moto G. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. So let's go ahead and get into that. First off, we'll look at the packaging because it actually starts there. In order to get a smartphone down to this ridiculous price that's accessible by almost anyone, you need to cut every corner possible. So the Moto G unboxing is super simple. You'll just get the phone on top and a USB cable for charging and data. That's it. No wall adapter, no headphones, no SIM card ejector tool, nothing fancy, just the necessities. And the same philosophy, of course, goes into the phone itself. You don't get anything fancy, nothing extra over the top at all, just the necessities done very well. But getting to the outsides of these two devices, there are some physical differences between the Moto X and Moto G, starting with the way it feels in the hand. Uh, as the Moto G is just a little bit thicker and a little bit heavier than the Moto X. The designs of the phones are of course super similar with the same back design and slight curve and ease to hold in the hand and even the same awesome dimple that I love so much from the Moto X. But the spec sheet will show that not only is the Moto G a tiny bit thicker and a tiny bit heavier, but there's also some internal shortcuts taken for cost. First of all, Moto Maker, the customization of all the colors and the accents and built in the USA, yeah, that's expensive, so there won't be that with Moto G, but there will be a sort of a do-it-yourself Moto Maker with a back that snaps off, so you can actually take the back off the Moto G and replace it with another back in a number of different colors. But something this removable back does not allow you to do is add storage or replace the battery. So the only thing available is the slot for the nano SIM card. Otherwise, you are locked into your eight or 16 gigabytes of storage, and that battery is non-removable. But speaking of that battery, this is actually one of the most impressive parts of the phone. Physically, it is technically slightly smaller. It's a 2070 milliamp hour battery, which is smaller than the one in the Moto X, but in actual everyday use, it's still lasted quite a while with great standby time and an average of, I'd say, three hours or so of screen on time, which is enough to last a full day of regular use. And I'm gonna go ahead and attribute that to the other internals, the operating system, and the specs. So running near stock Android 4.3 Jelly Bean here is the quad core Snapdragon 400 and a full one gigabyte of RAM. Now these are obviously way lower end specs than the Moto X, but in this price bracket, a quad core chip is pretty ridiculous. It's good to see it's the quad core version of the Snapdragon 400. And performance was also very impressive for the price. I mean, I was able to play some pretty graphically intensive games, not in 1080p obviously, but still without dropping any frames and it looks a very playable. And I could also, you know, browse the web and multitask and open and close apps without a hitch. Now, this is definitely not as quick as the Moto X, don't get me wrong. I mean, you can tell that you're working with one gig of RAM here. It's not unbearable, but you'll notice that things will take a little bit longer as if you're working with less RAM and slightly less processing power. In fact, I'd say the biggest bottleneck is actually the processing power, not the graphics, because sometimes I'd press to open an app and the process would clearly begin opening on the screen, uh, but then graphically you'd have to use the processor to catch up to where the graphics had gotten to. Basically the responsiveness of the Moto X, if the, if the responsiveness of the Moto X is a perfect 10 out of 10, the Moto G would give me about a seven. So you're working with slightly different specs to get you slightly different performance, but when you consider the huge difference in price, well, that's just something you gotta love. Now you're also working with a different display here on the front. So Moto G has a slightly bigger bezel all around the whole device and it's rocking a little smaller 4.5 inch 720p display and it's an LCD display instead of AMOLED. Now brightness and viewing angles were totally not a problem for this LCD display, but colors were definitely noticeably different, maybe a bit warmer 
and a little bit less accurate, but definitely not unpleasing at all to look at, just a little bit off. Now, because this is an IPS display and a Snapdragon 400, not an X8 chip, you're gonna be missing a few of the biggest software features of the Moto X that rely on those things. Active notifications, the twist to the camera, and active listening. So the active notifications from the X where you turn over your phone and get those few pixels that light up and indicate the time and your most recent notifications, that stuff requires an OLED display to work properly and not kill your battery. So you'll have to use the Moto G like a normal phone. And the X8 chip in the X has sensors for detecting gestures and voice dictation, but the Snapdragon 400 here in the Moto G does not have that. So if you twist to try to open the camera like on the Moto G, nothing will happen, it's not listening for that. And no matter how loud you shout, okay Google now at it, it's not going to respond because it's not listening for that either. Now, I don't know how you feel about these features. You may really, really, really want them or you may not care at all. And I think chances are, if you're picking up a sub $200 phone like this, you probably are in the second category. Now, there are three main things missing with connectivity on the Moto G. Number one is there's no five gigahertz Wi-Fi band. Kind of a minor annoyance if you ask me, if it's such a cheap phone. Number two is there's no NFC, and that's a little bit of a bigger annoyance for people. And you know, an NFC chip is really, really inexpensive these days, but again, they're cutting corners everywhere to get to a price this low. And number three, there's no LTE. Now the Moto G is an international device, and in a lot of the markets where you're gonna see this phone popping up and being really popular, LTE isn't a big deal at all. So this is actually not that surprising, and NFC is sort of, the biggest emission I think that you would expect to see in this device. Now the camera on the back of the Moto G is something that's really interesting. It's made me reconsider a lot of the way I think about cameras and smartphones. It's a five megapixel shooter, so it's way less resolution than the Moto X or a lot of the other stuff we've looked at this year. But obviously the quality is not going to be that great. But if you care about quality, if you care about the photo quality or resolution or video, and you have $179 to spend, you can go out and buy a decent $179 point and shoot camera on Amazon, and it still might not take much better video or photo than the Moto G. So if you think about it, I'm really impressed that there's even a camera at all in the Moto G. I remember the first Nexus 7, in order to hit that magical $199 price point, didn't have a camera at all. And we kind of dismissed that because it's a tablet, but that's one of the emissions they made to cut down on price. So the fact that the Moto G even has a camera at all that's even okay for $179 is incredible. So basically at the end of the day, what I'm trying to say here is the Moto G is an incredible deal. For $179, you cannot buy a better smartphone, period. And availability is also really good. When this device gets Android 4.4 KitKat, which if you watch my interview with the CEO of Motorola, Dennis Woodside, he promised that this device would get it in January and I got the US version, so I'd be waiting for that in January. When this gets KitKat, it's going to be an incredible phone even more than it already is. KitKat has lower system requirements. It runs better on lower end devices. And this is a prime scenario where you could take great advantage of that. If you wanna say my top five best features of Android 4.4 KitKat, I'll have that link right below the like button. But essentially, there's a lot to love about this phone before KitKat. And when it gets KitKat, it's gonna be awesome even more awesome. So when you need to think about whether or not this is the phone for you to buy for yourself, consider the following question. Is this to you the highest end low end device or the lowest end high end device? Because if you're looking for a high end device, this is not it. And this is not really as the way I see it, it's not the lowest end high end device. I see it as the highest end low end device, if that makes sense to you. It is an incredible value. It gets way better performance than any other device in this price. For reference, here's another phone that right now costs $179. It's not something you wanna buy right now, but you can for the same price as you can get a Moto G. I think the choice is clear, but it's up to you. Let me know what your choice would be in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching this video, and I will talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.